we almost had a like a double overnight in impressions and it equated to I think it was almost like a 50% increase in traffic literally overnight without uh, making any kind of significant changes during that specific time. Um, and so you guys have not been that, affected by a lot of those yeah, like algorithm changes, we, right? Like you've seen upticks, yeah. whereas a lot of medical companies have seen, you know, down clicks, right? Right. Or, or sort of um, decreases. And so to... we've been focusing on all of that. Um, we have Site Improve, which is a tool we use to sort of just make sure that we're doing a lot of things right. And then I should mention the Schema App tool because the Schema App tool is also tracking and telling us which structured data if there's errors or in, if there's valid or invalid items in regards to those errors on there too. So I should put that, I should put that one on there too. I yeah, well, we'll add schema app on the next one, especially with our big analytics focus this year, where we're going to uh, start being able to help companies measure. Do you want to talk a little bit about like how you're valuing search? I, I thought this was like, this even came up in a, a customer conversation yesterday on like how you're trying to like match organic traffic to paid search to put a number and dollar value to it. I thought this was interesting. Yeah. So SEM Rush uses, has a algorithm and a tool that it actually looks at what is your organic like the, the keywords and what you're actually getting results and clicks and items for impressions. Uh, and then based off what it would cost to actually bid to purchase those through paid efforts. Uh, and it attributes the value. And, and we're actually using the low end of their range because Amazing. I always feel like it's better to, to shoot low and, and actually exceed those values. So uh, this is actually the low range of what, it, of what we're actually displaying in here. Um, we've been, you know, really plugging away. I think some of the stuff that has really um, helped pave the way with, with doing a lot of focusing more on the structured data, it's also allowed us to spend more time focusing on actually our code from a mobile performance perspective um, and trying to see what are elements and pieces that we can do to improve how fast and how efficient our pages are performing so that we can improve that. Um, so talk so to me about, yeah, you can talk to me about this. I just updated the chart to like the top three rank keywords. Like what happened in mobile in December? Like you saw a big jump there. So we actually, the, we made a, some significant changes into some of the efficiencies on our code. Um, and I think that had been some of the conversations that we had had in the past as well. Um, so we actually looked at a lot of the scripts and a lot of the tools that we're using and we tried to see are some, all of those actually uh, necessary. And so we actually uh, stripped down some of the, the services and features that we weren't using uh, that we didn't see through analytics that resulted um, in actually improving our overall mobile speed of the site. Uh, it's still not anywhere nearly where I want it, but um, it's fantastic. We're, I mean, overall our traffic, we're about 61% is our traffic is mobile. And so I think one of the enlightening things about this is that we're doing a fantastic job on desktop and yet there's a lot of opportunity for us to improve how we're found on, uh, on smartphones, on mobile devices, because if we're, we're doing a fantastic job that way, but there looks, this has given us a great opportunity to know that there's a lot of ways that we can be more efficient um, to, to get found on. And, and did you see, we, when we were talking, you are talking a little bit about like FAQ markup, we think may have helped contribute to that bump yeah. in December. Is that correct? Yeah. So, so it's interesting too. So what I would say, one thing that I've learned is just because you put the, the, the schema markup and you do the markup on your site, it doesn't mean like that day Google's going to get it. And so sometimes it takes time. Um, and so while all of a sudden we saw our FAQ snippet start to get indexed in November, we actually, Jeff, I don't know, we actually put that code, we started putting code on there. I think it was probably what, it was September or October, I think, where we actually started tagging some of the elements within there. And it just takes some time, just like position ratings, it took a little bit of time. Uh, position ratings moved pretty quick, but the, the ability for it to be found, it did take a little bit of time for Google to, to identify and see that. I know that we're sending signals to Google to let them know that there is changes within there, but sometimes it does. Um, we've seen just a significant spike within there. I know it doesn't look like that much within here, but uh, you know, to all of a sudden get an additional 1. You know, 1.3 million impressions um, over well, the bam, right? Months. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Which, is, which is fantastic. It's really driven us to think 
and adjust how to write content. And so we actually had a whole bunch of service line content that we were rewriting um, within the beginning of this year. And we actually stopped our writers. And what we are doing now is we are requiring any page that we write that they do create certain questions and answers that can be tied to that content for any new page going forward. And so one of the things that we're working on and we're going to have it completed uh, at the end of this first quarter is a new FAQ sort of content type within our CMS. And so we'll have the ability to build out a robust library at a global level for our questions and answers and then tag and associate them to our services and to our physicians and to our locations. And then we'll embed that as a, like an accordion FAQ within that page. But um, we'll also be allowed to then share and use that on other pages that it might be respective content or aligned content within there. And then we're going to embed that within our actual search on our, our site. So if someone's actually typing a word or doing a search within the search bar, <clears throat> it'll actually not only just bring back page results, but we're going to set it up so it actually just shows them the questions and answers that they have within there. And it's really made us start thinking about how we can even engage a lot of our contact center, um, our nurse navigators, and others who are getting day, everyday questions and answers. And what we'd like to do is start to build repositories of that. So let me get this straight. So you're saying because of like the schema markup work and great results we see in FAQ, you've reprioritized like how you're doing content and you've also thought about how that goes into your page architecture across the different topics so that over time you can kind of connect those dots and make sure that like you're ultimately changing the patient experience. Yes, 100%. And you know, Amazing. That we, and we were talking earlier too, uh, you know, the buzzword, you know, you have people always like, hey, what are we doing for voice search? And, you know, it's, you don't necessarily have to do anything completely different for voice search than what you would be doing to optimize your site in general. Um, but the one thing that, that stuck to me is that as we become more customized to just asking a question on my phone or asking my, I have, I'm a Google Home, I'm not a Alexa guy, I'm a, I'm a Google Home guy. Um, but, you know, you start getting used to asking questions. What we've seen in a lot of our uh, keywords is that, you know, people aren't even just typing long, it used to be like it was keywords and it was long tail keywords. Now people are just typing in questions. Absolutely. And so <clears throat> voice search is actually trained people to type search that same way now. Um, and so, um, what better way to, to do that, but to go ahead and do the Q&A and do the questions and write it as though you were answering things specifically for the consumer no, and to have a, have a repository that we can just constantly be building to build out the entire database. Awesome. Um, you mentioned things too, recipes, um, you know, there's, there's always opportunities within your organization that you don't even realize we have a press. We have a publication company within our organization and they create educational books and they, one of the biggest sellers that they have is heart healthy recipe cookbooks. And so we're actually repurposing hardbound books. We're purchasing digital books and we're actually, we created unique recipe templates that have the ability to put videos and photos and the ingredients. Um, we just got that done, so we're actually building out the first 250, and we're going to see how that potentially can grow uh, and go there. And then one of the biggest things that we see from a careers, uh, from a keyword perspective is careers, and people are always looking for jobs. And so we've actually been able to partner with our career department to see how we can help them with their job listings, because it, it's, it's not even, it's one thing to think about what are we doing from a consumer perspective to help drive traffic, to help drive business, but we're also now having additional secondary uh, uses of this that are helping other areas of our organization grow. And so we're starting to work on getting schema markup for our jobs. And then we're going to be doing that as well for, we started that with our events. And so we're really excited to see how we've seen some significant growth in events uh, and really looking to see what's going to happen with FAQs. Over yeah. There. 